Hello and welcome to this quick video about this thing here. This is the Hawkeye Thumb 4K. Now, I've seen it kicking around for a couple of weeks and I thought, you know what, I've got to get my hands on one of these because I am a massive fan of the Runcam Thumb, the Runcam Thumb Pro and the Runcam Thumb Pro 4K. Those are fab cameras and I tend to use them a lot here and put them in places where I wouldn't risk a more expensive camera. Now, with those cameras being out for quite a while, I was excited to see that Hawkeye had decided to jump into this format of camera and bring out something and hoped that what they'd done was look at the run cam options and thought, you know what, I can do that better. And looking at the specs on the website, I got this one from Banggood, link below. It's a 4K, it has gyro flow support, it has a super wide field of view. You can power it directly from the balance tap of your battery, which is perfect. It has a video out, which is something that the run cam doesn't. It's lightweight, compact, and it's capable of recording in different orientations as well. Now, there are some nice touches in the case when you start looking at it. You have a removable lens that covers the screen. Um, I'll show you how it comes with the box in a moment. Sadly, there aren't any ND filters that ship with it. There is a single control at the front. Single press will start and stop recording. Press and hold it for a couple of seconds. It will change the mode and the little thing underneath it, the LED, will show you which mode it's in. The SD card plugs into the side and there is a little spring-loaded catch so that in the event of a crash, that card isn't ejected from the camera. And then underneath, Interestingly, they've decided to opt to install this kind of mount as part of this default case, which is an interesting choice. And for some pilots, that will be right up their street. However, that will limit other people who want to use it in that vertical orientation. The case is going to have to be much bigger to accommodate that bulge at the bottom. Then you have a USB port at the other side that you can use to plug it into the computer, use it as either a PC camera or more commonly I expect a USB device to access the files. And then you have two ports on the back. The left hand port is so you can plug it into a little joystick so you can access everything and change the settings. And then the right hand side is to power the thing with voltage and ground, but there's also a video out and a trigger pin as well. Now, the box that this comes in is super basic. I've seen a couple of other videos on this, and I thought that what they were showing was kind of a pre-production unit, but this is absolutely a production unit that I said just a moment ago I ordered from Banggood. So I expected the packaging to be a little bit more sophisticated. And it isn't really. You get some stickers. You get a little... Calling it a manual is going to be a little bit over the top. Um, it just gives you the very basic information. A couple of QR codes on here so that you can go and have a look at both the full manual. It is available on that QR link. I'll put a link down below. But also a version of gyro flow that's been set up to work with this particular camera. Then you get a bag of bits. That is the controller, some other things that will plug into the camera, and you get the camera itself. No SD card, no ND filters, no screws to hold it into whichever mount that you want. That's kind of what you get. Now, I was interested to see how the menu was going to work, so I had to rig up this, because unfortunately the cable that you need to get this all to work isn't in the box, which is really odd. But you can access it here, so let me talk about this while we go through it. The menu is very standard, and you can see here you can go from 4K 50 frames a second with no gyro data being stored, 30 frames a second 4K, 2.5K, and then 1080p. Those are your different options. You can decide whether you want loop recording, the auto turn off, how the auto white balance works, and everything else. To actually start stop recording, you can set it up to auto record when you power it. You can also then just stop and start recording by pressing the button on the front of it briefly. Again, as I said at the beginning, a long press will actually cycle through the different modes. And it's great that you have access to all of these different settings through this control. But it's really disappointing that I had to sit and start stripping and soldering wires together and use things that aren't provided in the box in order to hook this up to a... Uh, analog VTX unit in order for me to use my screen here to actually see what the heck was going on. The thing I did notice when I was playing with this is there is quite a chunk of latency between the camera and the AV out. So although having the AV out is a nice feature, I wouldn't fly with it. I think it would make you feel very sick very quickly. 
So let's have a look at some unstabilized footage. I'll talk about why that is in a moment. This is the standard lane that I tend to walk down. It's uh, mid-morning, very bright sky, some clouds about. This is on the widest field of view and you can see there is a bit of fisheye going on and it is getting a little bit overexposed. Um, the shadows themselves are a little bit blue colored but it's not doing a bad job as I point it into the sky you can see the wide dynamic range is coping with everything okay. Now let me just turn it round and I'll talk to the camera and you can hear what the mic's like. So this is the audio straight from the camera, currently recording in 4K with gyro flow and at the front I have kind of a, I guess that's a kind of a purple LED flashing, but hopefully you get an idea of what the kind of image coming off the camera is and also this is the raw audio so you can see what it's actually capturing. Lots of these cameras don't have good audio so hopefully you can hear me okay. Now up here on the bridge we're looking at this scene in 4K 30 frames a second. Lots of these smaller cheaper cameras, although they claim to be 4K, the performance is terrible. So what I'll do is I'll put the 4K, 2K and 1080p uh, images here from the camera and we'll zoom in on the top of the same place in each of the image to see how much more clarity we're getting. And as I zoom into the 4K in a moment, you can see there isn't that much difference between 1080p and 2K. They're pretty similar. Zooming into 4K, it might be a little bit clearer maybe. There might be slightly more definition there on the 4K, but it isn't chalk and cheese. So is this a 4K camera? No, I wouldn't say it is. I think calling it 4K is being very generous. Now, as the Runcam Thumb Pro is the one that's going to be compared with the most, let me put the side-by-side -side images of a Runcam Thumb Pro on the right compared to the Hawkeye Thumb 4K on the left hand side and you can see that the field of view is very large on the Hawkeye that's at the largest setting I'm not sure I would actually have a fly with that but you can see the difference in the clarity and personally I prefer the Runcam Thumb Pro image a lot better there's a lot more clarity it looks very very sharp in comparison to the one from the Hawkeye so there was a lot of reasons why I was getting excited about this camera when I saw it being advertised for sale. It's super small and compact, it's lightweight, I love the removable lens cover, that means that you could add UV filters like you can with a Runcam one. It's advertised as 4K, vertical and horizontal recording, gyro flow support, and AV output if you wanted to use it like that. And the power cables were in the box, so you didn't have to mess around trying to lash up something that would power it. And a pin for external control as well that's covered in the manual. Now talking about gyro flow, I've tried to get gyro flow to work here. However, I've really, really struggled. It seems that the H265 option that they're using to store the data, my computers here are just really, really unhappy, including my video editors are having to play around and mess about in order for that to work. And using gyro flow is causing some really odd things to happen as well, even using the gyro flow version that's supplied by Hawkeye. So there are a number of things to be aware of with this camera. You will need some kind of special cable if you want to connect it up to the AV output. That should have been in the box in my humble opinion. There isn't any kind of phone app to help you set it up at the field. Having to kind of have that special camera to plug it in to lash it up in order to access the menu or having a PC to change settings in a file is a really poor way of doing it. And I'm sure they could have done a lot better if they'd have thought about it a little more. The SD card can be a pain to remove, it kind of sinks into the middle and although that spring-loaded catch is great to stop it being ejected into the grass in a crash, it does mean that getting it in and out of the thing can be painful. I just use the USB port at the side to copy to and from the storage. I do like the fact that they have included different balance taps for different battery sizes, 3, 4 and 6S. However, be aware that the 6X tap is only pulling off the first four cells of the battery, not the last two. That potentially could unbalance your uh, thing over time. The mic, although it does work, is not great for flying. It isn't covered in any way, so all you hear is that noise of wind on a microphone and it's unusable. And like I said a moment ago, using the 265 protocol to encode and store the video, although that sounds like a great idea, you know what? It really needs to have a 264 option on there as well. In summary, this is almost a great little camera. 
to me, it feels like a proof of concept or a beta unit, not a final finished product. If they'd have put more thought on the cables that came in the box, that would have seemed to make a lot more sense to me. If they'd have put more thought into how you can change the settings easily at the field and thought about how they can improve over the excellent Runcam Thumb Pro, that would have made a lot more sense than bringing this out. The only real differentiation here is that it is quite a bit cheaper, but it's nowhere near the quality of the Runcam Thumb Pro cameras with the packaging, the manual, the included cables and the performance. So for me, if I was buying one of these, I would save an extra £30-£40 and get the Runcam Thumb Pro. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.